let us continue with the discussion of our uh, density matrix. We wrote the equation for the density matrix, a nth element of the density matrix as by the following equation delta m n e to the minus e n by k t where e n is the eigenvalue of the state n and delta m n is a Kronecker delta and for m is equal to n this will be the diagonal element so diagonal element and this there then will represent the populations of diagonal elements are 0 at equilibrium at thermal equilibrium this will be 0 for m is not equal to n at equilibrium. Okay. And we also wrote in the previous class an operator form of the density uh, for the density operator we derived an equation we wrote the density operator e equation for the density operator rho is equal to 1 by z plus k by z i z where i z is the z magnetization and this z is the partition function and this represents the number of states. Okay. Now we also wrote earlier when you make a measurement let us say if you want to measure the x magnetization then we also derived earlier that we have to calculate the expectation value of this operator which represents the x magnetization and that is equal to is equal to trace of i x with the density operator rho. We had derived this equation earlier. Let us take a simple example here for a one spin system i is equal to half we have we derived this expression a matrix representation of the i x operator is equal to half 0 1 1 0 and the i z operator was 1 is equal to half 1 0 0 minus 1. Okay. And therefore, the density operator for this rho is equal it turns out to be this is equal to half into the unit matrix plus plus k by 4 1 0 0 minus 1 where k is gamma h cross h naught by k t. Okay. So now putting this together you calculate i x rho this product if you calculate it this turns out to be half into 0 half minus k by 4 and this will be half plus k by 4 and 0. Okay. Therefore, the trace of i x rho which is the sum of the diagonal elements of this um, uh, product this is equal to 0. Therefore, there is no x magnetization in the equilibrium state. Right. This also we have said earlier when we defined at thermal equilibrium of diagonal elements are 0 and uh, so this is mathematically shown here that the x magnetization is uh, 0 in at equilibrium uh, condition. Now suppose for example the you are dealing with a non equilibrium state and that often comes when you do various kinds of manipulations you can create a density matrix the which is which is which has off diagonal elements which are non zero in this in the earlier cases you notice that the, the, the density matrix had off diagonal elements zero so now we consider a a matrix rho is equal to something like this p1 z a 
A here and P2 here. So, we said these are the populations here, the density matrix has of diagonal elements are the populations and we somehow consider a situation where the off diagonal element here are non-zero but are equal to A. Now what will be the consequence of this? Now if I want to calculate the trace again of Ix rho then this will be equal to half 0 1 1 0 multiplied by P1 P2 A A. So, this will turn out to be equal to half A A P2 P1 and this is equal to A. Now you see there is a the trace is non-zero therefore there is a net X magnetization in this situation. Therefore the density matrix represents the complete situation about the system. You have the diagonal elements which have the uh, populations and the off diagonal elements will represent transverse magnetization. Same thing will happen Y as well. So, you may create various kinds of situations and how does these things uh, occur, how do these things occur. This will happen as the result of various kinds of manipulations you might do in your experimental sequence. Then it becomes necessary for us to actually calculate the density operator and then we can make the measurement. So, the density operator calculation that will be dependent on time if you are making uh, a pulse sequence where lots of pulses are applied and this go as a function of time along the time axis. So, therefore, we need to consider and calculate the evaluation evolution of the density operator with time. So, how do we do this? This will require a framework where we can calculate the time evolution of the density operator. So, uh, this is what we are going to discuss uh, in the next uh, few minutes. So, for understanding the performance of multiple experiments, it becomes necessary to understand the time evolution of the spin system through the pulse sequence and this is best done by calculating the time evolution of the density operator. So, for this we begin from the time dependent Schrodinger equation. See time dependent Schrodinger equation describe how the state evolves with time and that is the equation is given in this manner it is minus h uh, cross by i d psi by dt is equal to h psi and where h is the Hamiltonian describing the system containing all the interactions and psi is dependent on time. So, the evolution of psi tells you how the system is evolving with time. Okay. So, to uh, achieve this let us write the wave function psi as uh, as before as a superposition of various state functions eigenstates the c and t's are the coefficients and u n's are your eigenstates they constitute an orthonormal basis set as we defined before now let us substitute this in the schrodinger, schrodinger equation we get minus h cross by i summation n d c n by d t into u n and that is equal to h and this is the psi again here the summation n C and T U N. Now we take the matrix elements of this with the state U K. Okay, so that means you multiply on the on the left. You take uh, this bra here the K minus H cross by I K summation N D C N by D T. And this is the ket here N. So this summation goes over the N indices, and that is equal to on the right hand side you have the H. K here and the H C and T U N. This is the wave function psi. Okay, summation n. Now, so therefore, this is equal to now C and T is a constant, and therefore we can take that out of uh, this uh, to the move it to the left, and K will come inside. So we will have K H N. So C and T, this K H N, this will be the matrix element of the Hamiltonian, and this is represented as H K N. So therefore, this differential on the left hand side. This is equal to summation, summation C and T H K N. Now on the left hand side notice that there will be only one non-zero element. This summation goes over all N, but this N and K are orthonormal. Therefore, this will survive only when K is equal to N. Therefore, there will be only one element here D C K by D T. Therefore, my summation will disappear, 
minus h cross by i d c k by d t is equal to c n t h k n. Okay. So, now we also know the basic definition of the density matrix right. So, d by d t k rho m is equal to d by d t c k c m star this is the basic definition of course the ensemble average is implicit here. So, uh, ensemble average for the coefficients is implicit in this equation. Now, on the right hand side you differentiate this explicitly you get c k d c m star by d t plus c m star d c k by d t. Now, these are and remember these are coefficients these are uh, time dependent of course uh, and therefore, we can move them around. Now, looking at this we can calculate what d m star by d t is we derive this equation for d c k by d t. Okay. So, therefore, therefore d c k by d t will be equal to minus i by h cross summation c n t h k n. Now, I want for the complex conjugate. So, if I want to take the complex conjugate here I have to take the complex conjugate on the right hand side as well. So, when I do that it becomes i by h cross because of the minus i by h cross will become i h cross and this coefficient c n star will be now c n will be now c n star and this element will be h you have to represent because you have to turn them around this way right. So, therefore, this will become h n m that is uh, uh, instead of k here m here it will come the other side d m star will be m will come on this side n will come on this side because that is what happens when you take the complex conjugate on this of this matrix element. Okay. Substituting this then we get d by dt k rho m is equal to i by h cross c k c n star h n m minus i by h cross c m star c n h k n. Okay. That was the substitution of those equations here. So, this will now be equal to i by h cross summation n. Now, for this once again this summation k rho n we write this again for the density operator c k n c n star is k rho n this is this matrix element here and h n m we retain as it is h n m is n h m and minus i by h cross here once again in the summation we have c m star c n is written as n rho m we turn put it around because these are coefficients we can move them around here we can move this here and this there and we keep this h k n here h k n here and this one we will write it here as n rho m. Okay. So, now the summation is taken out here put it together for the entire equation you have put the whole thing in a curly bracket here and you have the summation n here. Now, we notice an interesting that has happened here with the summation n we have got this element here summation n this is the ket and this is the bra this runs over all the n's. Similarly, here also we got this ket n and bra n. So, this summation runs over all the n's and you remember from previous uh, classes that summation n this sort of a operator this is the projection operators sum over all the projection operators is equal to 1. Therefore, this element vanishes similarly this element vanishes and the summation also vanishes. Therefore, I will have i h cross k rho and this h Hamiltonian because this has gone and in similarly on this side I have here k is of course there and the k is k appears here h this one has vanished h rho and this is m this will survive as it is. So, therefore, I have here i by h cross this is the bra k and inside here rho h minus h rho and m state here on this. Now, what is this here? This is called as the commutator between the two operators rho and h. It is typically written in this manner rho h m. So, uh, therefore, if I combine this if you compare these two equations then I will have d rho by dt is equal to i by h cross rho comma h and this is the commutator of rho h. This is called as the Liouville von Neumann equation. This is the most important equation for calculation of all the density matrix elements of, of any experiment. So, this is the uh, fundamental equation where the time evolution of the system is described and you calculate the elements of the density operator as you carry out various 
manipulations with your spin system and in the end when you actually are ready to measure you take the expectation value with regard to the ix or the iy operator and that gives you the measurement. So therefore the, this, is the, this is the crucial equation here and we have to see how this equation can be solved and this uh, there are standard methods of this we will now not go into the details of the solution how it is solved but we will take the solutions of this as they appear and we can use this solution to calculate the evolution of the density operator as a function of time. Okay. Now if the Hamiltonian is explicitly independent of time in that Liouville equation then the solution of this is easily written in this manner. We will we are not deriving this explicitly from that point but this equation can be verified by explicit differentiation. Rho of t is given by e to the minus i by h cross h t rho of 0 e to the i by h cross h t. So the rho of 0 means this is at time t is equal to 0 and these two operators on the left and the right these describe the evolution of the density operator uh, as a function of time. So this can be easily verified by explicit differentiation of this. This is independent of time. These are the two things which actually depend on time. Therefore, you can differentiate it and reorganize the elements and then you will find that it satisfies that von Neumann equation. Now using this definition, let us try and calculate the off diagonal elements of the density matrix. So what we do? We take the matrix elements here, rho in the middle and then m here and m here. This is basically rho mn this is rho mn. So therefore this is m here. Now for rho of t we put this solution here e to the minus i by h cross h t rho of 0 e to the by i by h cross h t and then you have n here. Okay. Now how do we calculate these elements? Now we notice earlier we defined with exponential operators what is the result when you operate it on a particular state. If you have an eigenvalue equation then e to the i by h cross h t n gives you e to the by h cross e and t where e n is the eigenvalue of the state n. So for the Hamiltonian h for the operator h then you get this eigenvalue e n for the state n. Therefore e to the i by h cross h t is e to the by h cross e n t n. Similarly e to the i by h cross Hamiltonian t operating on m gives you e to the i by h cross e m t operating on ket m. Now if I take the complex conjugate of this, if it is the complex conjugate then all what I get on the left hand side I get here instead of the ket I get the bra this here and this one will now get the minus sign e to the minus i by h cross h t essentially this will be operating on the left here and that is equal to m and you take the complex conjugate here. So this state will come here. So this is e to the minus i by h cross e m t. So you put this, that definition here because now we want to operate this one on this side and this one on this side. Okay. So this operating on this side gives me e to the by h cross e n t because this now is a number. This one operating on this side gives me this, this number m e to the minus i by h cross e m t. So therefore I take out these two numbers out then I get e to the i by h cross e n minus e m. E n comes from here and minus e m comes from here t and the state m and rho of 0 stays here and n stays here. So therefore the off diagonal element of the density matrix rho m n is equal to e to the i by h cross e n minus e m t m rho 0 n. Now we notice this is the energy difference between the two states n, e, n, n, between the states n and m. Okay. So now if I write e, m is equal to h uh, nu m, this is the frequency now and this is the Planck's constant and e, n is equal to h nu n and I define w, e, n or omega m, m, n is equal to 2 pi nu m minus nu n. So now this is in radians, these are in, in hertz frequencies. So therefore, if I put that in here, now rho mn is equal to e to the i omega mn t uh, and this matrix element uh, m rho 0 n. Okay. Now we also know that at rho mn this density matrix is, is simple this definition cm cn star ensemble average. 
Now going back to the earlier definition of this uh, coefficients that they have an amplitude and a phase. So we write it in this manner and assemble average is written this way C modulus of Cm modulus of Cn these are the amplitudes of the these two functions and the phases are written in this manner here e to the i m minus alpha n alpha m minus alpha n these are some phases some numbers which represent actually represent the phases. Now if these are random by the hypothesis of random phases so these elements this average will go to 0 in the case of equilibrium state. However, if this is non-zero then non-vanishing of rho mn implies existence of phase coherence between the spins in the states m and n in the ensemble. At thermal equilibrium all phases occur with equal probability which implies that Cm star is equal to 0. So therefore at equilibrium these off diagonal elements of the density matrix are 0 and at if there is a deviation from equilibrium then you will have off diagonal elements non-zero and we showed in the very beginning that if there is an off diagonal element of the density matrix which is non-zero that amounts to transverse magnetization Ix or Iy right. The appearance of Ix or Iy therefore implies a phase coherence here between the spins in the states M and N. So therefore transverse magnetization therefore gets connected to the phase coherence between the spins. So anytime you have a transverse magnetization we say there is a phase coherence between the spins and decay of that phase coherence amounts to decay of the transverse magnetization okay. So now putting that thing here at equilibrium this equation has to go to 0 and now this is never 0 uh, sorry this one is never so this is an oscillatory function. So if this function has to be 0 then it is this one which has to go to 0. So that means this element is 0 at equilibrium this element is 0. So if we create a non-equilibrium state wherein this element is non-zero then we have created an off diagonal element which is non-zero. So any non-vanishing off diagonal element implies a non-equilibrium state okay. So therefore extending to multiple spin systems and a variety of uh, situations a very generalized density matrix can be written in this manner. In the most general case you have rho of t which is written as we have the populations on of the uh, n states here suppose you have a total of n states here you have the populations along the diagonal p1, p2, p3, p4 and so on and so forth and on the off diagonal elements you have these elements coefficients this and then you have the oscillatory function i omega 1 2 t between this represents the energy difference between the states 1 and 2 and this is that coefficient which we saw uh, in the previous slide and likewise this coefficient keeps varying from element to element here and this oscillation frequency also is changing with uh, energy, uh, element to element because the energy levels are changing. So if you have so many energy levels there will be oscillations of different types and one can create all these kinds of phase coherences which means that if I have an element which is non-zero here it would mean that I have created a phase coherence between the states 1 and 3. Here there is a phase coherence created between the states 1 and 2 this that is by the C12 term C13 term yes and this is by the 1n element this is the but the first state and the n state and this is the oscillation okay this time evolution is given by this. And this actually depends the non-equilibrium situations where you have created a phase coherence between the states 1 and n. So this will be the complex conjugates here. So you have C21, P2 so and it will be written in the same manner C23 and so on and so forth C2n and here we get we written as omega n1 if you notice here okay. So therefore if I want to write it as omega 1n to represent this then I will put a minus sign here and then it will be consistent with what we said before. So when I say n1, n2, n3 this remains the same then I have the populations here. Therefore the density matrix has complete information about the spin system. It carries all the information through the pulse sequence if you have generated a pulse sequence if spin echo for example we consider or just a Fourier transform uh, experiment with a single pulse what all happened how many if there are many frequencies how they rep, how they all uh, become uh, 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 magnetizations uh, which is observed in the FID 
all of this can be calculated and you have to take the trace of the observable with this density operator and it will tell you what is all the information present in the spin system and which can be used for measurement and interpretation of your results. So I think uh, this is the crucial stage and we can, we can stop here and evolution of the density operator calculation will be required uh, for interpretation of any experimental sequence we may design. So we will stop here and we will continue with this density operator density matrix calculations uh, in the future classes. We may also think of some simplifications in the calculations how to arrive at uh, these uh, results in a, in a much simpler form those things will come in, in due course.